about the global inert property. So this is an attribute that you can add into your HTML. It's a property you can set through JavaScript. So what is it? What can we do with it? And what should you be aware of when dealing with it? So it all started with the dialog component that was added back in 2023. So I've got a button here, open it, click on it, opens up a dialog. So here's a dialog, close the button, closes it. Not really seeing much. There's a little bit of a gray overlay that's being added to the page, but nothing else really visually jumps out. Now this is a modal dialog. And one of the mechanisms that help this to be a modal dialog is the fact that everything else on the page is now inert. So I can't click on this. I can't click on any of these links. I can't click on the links over here. I can't select text. I can't interact with the form elements, submit a form. None of that stuff works because this has the focus and everything else on the page has been set to inert. So I close the dialog. Now I can select this. I can click on these links. I can click on these links. I can select stuff in the drawer. I can interact with the forms. I can submit a form. All that works because it's no longer inert. It's now the default state is that inert is set to false for everything until you open a dialogue and then everything is changed. So how do we deal with this in HTML and what's the point and you know, what are the implications of us using inert ourself? So now in our web page, if we jump in here, what we can do is we can actually turn things inert or not inert. So I have my drawer, I've got a main section and I've got my dialogue. Those are the three top level things inside of body. Here, let me zoom in a little bit here. There we go. And I'll hide this. Okay. Now the drawer, this is something that is currently on the page and okay, great. Now, if a screen reader is reading this content, so the accessibility tree, this has been added to the accessibility tree. So a screen reader can read it. It's aware of those links. Great. Good thing. But what if we take this drawer and we put it off the page? So I'm going to take this class drawer in my CSS and inside of my class drawer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the left position to negative 100%. So it's now off the left hand side of the page. We don't see it. Okay, great. Now for somebody who's just using the page visually interacting with it, this makes sense. There is no drawer menu right now. You know, maybe there's a button we can click to make it show, but it's not part of their awareness of this page. But if I were to, you know, do a search on the page, so this is what the screen readers will see. If I look for, you know, hey, is there a drawer? There is. It says somewhere on the page there's the word drawer. It's just that it's off the left hand side. I can't see it right now. If this is negative 50%. Here, sorry, let's make this uh, left 10%. There we go. So we bring it, bring it in 10% from the uh, left edge of the page. There is my drawer. So it is aware that this text is here. However, if we go into the HTML and we mark this thing as inert, save it. Now, I can't select this. I can't click on these links. Nothing is going to happen when I click on them. If I do the search for the word drawer, it doesn't show up because it's been removed from the accessibility tree. It's no longer part of the active page. It is inert. So now if we go into the CSS and we say that this is negative 100%, that makes sense. It's off the screen for the people who are visually using it. And it's no longer part of the current document. It's like, okay, well, let's hide this thing. Pretend it's not there at all. That's the purpose of inert. So when you mark something as inert, it means that you cannot select the text. So if there's any text on there. Now, if you're somebody who builds mobile applications, you use Flutter or uh, React Native and so on, and you're building Android and iOS applications, sort of the default state for text is that it cannot be selected. You have to intentionally say that this piece of text is something that can be interacted with. The purpose for that when it comes to mobile is there is overhead. When you make something selectable, 
you have to listen for those events, like somebody's touching on the screen, they're selecting an area of the content. So that's actually more processing power that's required. So the default state on mobile is, no, no, it's, you know, unless you really need it to be selectable, it's not going to be. So that's the inert state now. In the web, the default is, yeah, yeah, interact with everything. But inert will override that and say, no, you can't click on the link. You can't click on a button. You cannot fill in a form. Like right now, I can fill in a form. But if I go into my main content here and I scroll down to my form and this first input, if I come in here and I say it's inert, now this is fine, but I can't click, I can't type anywhere inside of here. Now this cascades as well. If I was to go to the main element and up in the main, I say this is inert. Now, nothing from here to the end of here. All of this is inert. I cannot select this text. I'm clicking, trying to select this. I can't click in here, can't click in here. I can't click on the send. None of these work. So marking something as init will, uh, sorry, inert means that it and all of its children, click events don't work. Focus events don't work. Selecting text doesn't work. Screen readers do not work. Um, the uh, search, so command F, searching for something on the page, it no longer shows up in the results. So here, if I do lorem, it's not showing up. It's not part of it. Now, if we come back here and we say the the main is no longer inert, save it, come back. Now we can select it. Now, if we do a search lorem, yeah, there's two places it shows up. If I click on show dialogue, now, if I do a search for lorem, I get these two inside the dialogue, but I don't get the ones that are out here in the inert section. So we've lost that as well. So there are things to consider with accessibility. If you start marking things as inert, there's this cascade of inert and nothing inside of it can be interacted with. Um, it also will remove things from the tab order. So on the page here, if I hit tab, you can see there I'm on two, one, dialogue. As I'm tabbing, I'm stepping through, <clears throat> pardon me, all the inputs on the page. I have tab indexes set on these things. So one, two, three, four. So this is the first, and I'm sort of going backwards through this. The button at the top is number five, and then in the form, six, seven, eight. So I've set this backwards tabbing order. So I go back up through here. So if I start here, tab, I'm gonna go through the menu bar and then four, three, two, one, up to the button here and then down, button, input, input. So that tab order, as you mark things inert, they no longer will be part of that tab order. So there's inert on that one and inert on that one. So number one and three are no longer part of the tabbing order on the page. So number four, yes, three, no, so it should jump to two. It does, and there we go. We're tabbing through the rest of it. Now, we've marked things inert, and we know that we're disabling interactions with it, um, but there's nothing visual that happens. This is the one last important part. If you want something to be shown as being inert, you need to do something in your CSS. So in my CSS, I'll come down here and I'm going to say anything with the attribute inert and anything inside of something. This is the cascade. So the parent, yeah, great. Okay, it's inert, but anything inside of it should also get this as well. So opacity is a great way to do this. So we can say, all right, I'm going to say 50% opacity uh, or let's make it 20 just to really show it off. Um, cursor default so there's not going to be anything that says oh this has got a hand on it uh, or it's got the waiting symbol or something it's just nope it's going to be this regular arrow there's no interactions happening with that and then pointer events we'll set that to none and we're also going to say user select none so this is part of what you would normally do before the inert property to say, no, no, you can't interact with this thing. This is how you would disable that. Now we can see, oh yeah, look, my links there and there, those are now inert. If we come up and we 
set main to inert. All the content in here, we can just barely make it out here. So all of this has been marked as inert on the page. So you can barely see it. I mean, I've overdone the amount of um, opacity reduction just to really highlight this. We remove this. There we are, we're back to seeing it. I can remove the inerts, we don't need that. Now we've got the dialogue. When we show the dialogue, these things are inert, but we haven't added the property or attribute really. So, sorry, we've added the property, not the attribute. And the attribute is the thing that the CSS keys into to know how to style something differently. So if you do want something to appear as inert, to really emphasize the fact that, you, hey, you can't do anything with this content, what you can do is inside of here, I've got my click to show the modal, click to close the modal, and we'll just expand this function. So in addition to showing the modal, what we're going to do inside of here is we're going to say, hey, let's get that main element. So query selector main and set attribute inert. There we go. So we've added the attribute to the main element. So we show the dialog and there we go. We've got the overlay and just the very faintest amount back here. So if I bump this up a little bit, let's say 80% opacity. There we go. So it is faded in the background to really emphasize the fact that the content in the back is inert. And that's it. That is the inert property. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.